Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, now, uh, in this presentation, uh, from a more general context, uh, we will go to uh, individuality and to individual uh, human uh, uh, individual human life. Uh, we will uh, focus more on the economy of the masses uh, because uh, the masses. Uh, were the main motors of the uh, of the economy mm. in, uh, in every time. Uh, uh, in this presentation, uh, uh, I will present you uh, some uh, fine circumstances in which context uh, uh, was the skeleton fine. Uh, then I will ask uh, my co-presenter Dalia uh, to comment on uh, results of diet and. Uh, paleo uh, mobility and then we will try to put uh, uh, the results into some some sort of the uh, some sort of the uh, okay so uh, uh, the individual uh, belongs to the Baden culture uh, and Baden culture existed in the second half uh, of the fourth uh, millennium uh, BC it, it was spread in the territory of uh, current uh, Carpathian uh, Basin in, uh, uh, in uh, yeah, central, uh, central Europe. Uh, one of the uh, basic characteristics uh, of this culture is very high quality uh, pottery, uh, which is uh, well, uh, well fired and, uh, and the dark burnished. Uh, also, there is a lack of uh, copper uh, metallurgy and in this time, new means of transport uh, were introduced, uh, such as wagons, which were pulled by a pair of oxen or, uh, or uh, horse. However, uh, the most uh, distinctive uh, uh, characteristics of this culture is a discrepancy between the number of the settlements and the burials known from this period. Uh, we know uh, several hundreds, maybe thousands uh, of settlements, but as you can see, there are only a uh, dozen, uh, dozen of graves. Uh, uh, generally, uh, in the beginning of the Baden culture, uh, we can see uh, some, uh, some symmetries, but uh, in the course of the development uh, of this culture, uh, uh, settlement or, or burial, burials in the settlement context uh, prevails. Uh, okay, and we will focus. Uh, we will focus on on this case. Uh, so our case study is uh, based on the find uh, from Hranovce, which is uh, located in uh, southwestern Slovakia. The site itself uh, is situated on a, a river terrace, so it's very close to uh, to the water course. Uh, there are some very peculiar find circumstances because. Uh, the skeleton just fell off from the ceiling uh, of a wine uh, cellar. Uh, the inspection uh, of the site uh, revealed that uh, the skeleton uh, was found at the bottom of the settlement pit, uh, which was dug, a, dug into the uh, which was dug into the less. Uh, okay. There is some mistake uh, in, in the presentation. There should be some pictures, but uh, nevertheless. Uh, based on uh, uh, based on the anthropological uh, examination, uh, uh, we uh, have here a, a female. Uh, the sex uh, of the skeleton was also confirmed by uh, ancient uh, DNA, uh, which also showed us that uh, she belonged to a haplogroup K1A, uh, whose origin is uh, in the uh, in the Near East. Uh, uh, she was died. Uh, she died at the age of adultus two uh, and maturus one. Uh, she had a, a below average uh, body height, and according to radiocarbon data from a piece of uh, long bone, she belonged uh, uh, to the end of the fourth millennium BC. And this data is in a, a correspondence with uh, the data of the of the pottery. Uh, the paleopathology uh, of this uh, skeleton is uh, very interesting. It seems uh, she suffered a lot of uh, diseases and injuries, uh, uh, such as uh, the uh, distant uh, ends of 
uh, both uh, of her forearms uh, suffered from a nutritional uh, disorder, uh, which might have been a result of some uh, trauma uh, during, uh, during her life. Also, she has some uh, arthrosis, arthritis, uh, arthritis uh, in her cervical vertebrae, which might have been caused by a heavy uh, workload uh, during her life or in higher, uh, higher ages. Uh, this type of uh, uh, disease or uh, change uh, appears, appears uh, naturally. Uh, also, uh, her teeth were highly abraded uh, because of consum uh, consumption of uh, highly abrasive uh, food, but we are thinking that uh, she might also use the, tool, uh, the teeth as, uh, as a tool. And uh, on her skull on, and on her cervical vertebrae, there is some osteoma, which suggesting she also suffered uh, of some uh, uh, bone, uh, bone cancer. So uh, we tried to reconstruct her day-to-day -day life by a series of stable isotope analyses. And I would like to ask uh, Dahlia to comment on the result of this analysis. Uh. We did um, a measuring of uh, mobility patterns for that female uh, using laser ablation uh, strontium-based system. And I also did the diet uh, of, of this individual measuring uh, molar 1, molar 2, molar 3 and the long bone covering the whole biological age of, of, of that female. And um, we, uh, in total we have... Uh, 30 measurements covering M1, M2, M3. So you have uh, M1, uh, the, the tooth, um, M3, no, M1 uh, develops during early childhood, age of from zero to, to three years of age. Then you have uh, M2, covers more or less the age of six to nine. And the M3 is the last tooth in your, in your jaw that develops when you are almost an adult, so you are 18, 21. So I imagine that if I take uh, 10 measurements, from each tooth with laser ablation, I'm going to see a line of how this female is moving in different time slots of her life. I wanted to see how she is acting as a child and how this mobility pattern is, is changing uh, later on. And this is possible thanks to the fact that our biological, uh, our body is actually developing the enamel in a very consistent way. So you, when you look at your teeth in your mirror, you're going to see a little lines going up and down. This is perichemata lines. And we know exactly that one perichromata line develops over seven to ten days. So we have a whole history of ourselves encoded in an enamel, in an enamel uh, layer. So when you look at the overall data from these three teeth, M1, M2, and M3, you're going to see absolutely nothing. Basically nothing is changing. 0, 7, 0, 7, 0, 9, 7, 0, 9, 7, 0, 9. But uh, it looks like the female overly, I mean, in general, is from a local area. This is the overall summary of all measurements for each two. But uh, when you're going into details, you're going to see something like this. There's a huge variation in each time period of her life. And in fact, the situation is not so clear. We can't really say that she is local, because the first set of values you're going to see in her early childhood and this is M1, it's actually suggesting that she, is, she was not born locally. Because I checked also the local soils and, and waters for that pretty much territory where, where Peter found her, and we can see that the baseline values are very, very low. We have uh, basalts, so this is, this is the local environment. The soils in that area are 0708. These blue dots here indicate the, the Danube uh, aquifer because the aquifer of Danube is covering that territory. So we have these two values here and here showing the local area. You can clearly see that she's coming from outside into area, and later on she's staying for a long time living locally in, in her life. But the dynamic of her mobility is changing because here you're going to see it's fairly stable. You imagine a little child, uh, age of three, that are only walking. There's nothing, they can't really travel on horseback, let's face it. But that is changing later on and later on when she's um, an adult. And here we have a diet. And diet again is, is following the pattern. Dramatic change of diet. 
from exactly the same teeth, and one, and two, and three, and a lung bone. So, shh, big shift. And then she's staying locally within the area. But overall pattern of diet, I mean, Petr has mentioned that we suspect she was heavily ill by the end of her life. She was probably suffering from some kind of cancer. So you can imagine the cancer patients, they don't travel too far because of the pain. No matter how much you try in a prehistoric Europe, you can't travel when you're really sick. Yeah. So for me, if we consider any possibility for her traveling, it would be canoe. It would be by boat. And we have a lot of little streams. And I was asking Peter how far her burial was from the local stream. It's approximately 100 meters. So it starts to make some kind of sense that she could travel being carried by the other people in her in her life. But in general, when we look at the overall pattern of the diet for the Neolithic Europe, it's not bad. She's not starving. I, can, I have no ground to claim that she's starving. This is a pretty well-fed person. So we may assume that there was a group of people taking care of her, giving her food if she was unable to, uh, to take her for herself. Thank you very much. So uh, we are just uh, uh, in the beginning uh, of our journey uh, to discover uh, the archaeology, uh, archaeology of the of the masses. Uh, so we want to uh, profile more of these individuals uh, from this period to find out how did they behave, how uh, what did they uh, consume, and we will try uh, in the future uh, to connect this kind of economy uh, with uh, with the microeconomy of the households. Uh, we saw that uh, this uh, female uh, was uh, not very mobile and when she did travel, she traveled by uh, so minimizing, minimizing the physical, uh, physical activity. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, therefore, her personal mobility, or in this case, uh, uh, this mobility, uh, it shaped her, uh, her local economy. Uh, we think that uh, based, based uh, on, the, on the information about, uh, she had some uh, special status uh, within her community and this uh, might have been the reason why she was deposited, uh, uh, why she was deposited uh, at the bottom of the settlement pit. And uh, one very important information is that together with her, or she was buried with bones of very uh, young animals, we can say bones of a fetus, of, uh, of sheep and goat, and this uh, gives us a hint in which period <coughs> she was buried, and it might, might be uh, the end uh, of the winter, or uh, early beginning, or beginning of the, of the spring. So, thank you very much uh, for your attention. And, uh,